Hey guys, it's Justin again with another Tutorial Tuesday video. Uh, this time we're going to go back a little bit more with the basic stuff. Um, I've, I've, I try not to do a lot of super basic tutorials because I think a lot of you have a general idea how a lot of things work. Uh, but one thing that even I struggled with uh, when I first started in this hobby was thinning my paints down. Uh, so, what I have in front of me, uh, I have some Mr. Color Leveling Thinner 400. This is basically just uh, Mr. Color Thinner with a little bit of retarder added uh, so that the paint doesn't dry as quickly. I have an empty jar. Uh, basically, I've run out of this paint and I'm going to refill it. Um, so this is Mr. Colors 107, character white. Uh, white and yellow are two of the hardest colors to thin down. Uh, so it's, I, I don't really think I'm going to be able to show you how to do it incorrectly, but you know I, I think I can give you some guidelines here to follow. Uh, this is a Tamiya bottle. Um, it doesn't matter what brand the bottle is, it's just a bottle. Um, but these have measuring measurements on them, so you know how much paint is in there and, and how much of what is in there. So uh, I don't really use this too much. I use it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> it helps when I'm getting my ratios down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this in between the 5 and the 10 with paint. And then I'm going to fill this to 15, just maybe just a little bit higher, with thinner. Uh, and the idea is you want a 50-50 ratio, and you want, um, you know, that's a good starting point, because you don't want to start by adding one or two drops of, of thinner into your paint and going, well, it doesn't spray still, so I guess I'll add a couple more drops. Um, another thing is a lot of people don't really thin this way. I think a lot of people actually just thin as they go. I prefer to have batches since I don't do a whole lot of color mixing. Every once in a while, but not that much. Uh, so, take my pipette. And like I said, I'm going to fill it up to just under 10. So that's about five. And I'd say that's about where I want to be. So this over here. And I can put a lid on this, because I don't need it anymore, presumably. I might actually need it. That's about where I want it. And then I will fill this to the 15. Now this one I'll actually use the pipette as it was intended because it's really easy to put way too much of this stuff in there that you need and that can cause issues. One more way to do it. Okay, now typically you want to spray it about a fit, or you know, you want a, a pretty thin consistency if you're going to spray, especially if you're doing base coats. Uh, but you'll want it a little bit thinner if you have a smaller needled airbrush. And that's because um, it just it doesn't have as much room to go through. That's all. Yeah, it's really as simple as that. Um, you know, the, the larger needled airbrushes have a little bit more space for the paint to go through, and there's less to worry about. If you, th if you have a smaller needled airbrush, there's a smaller hole for the paint to escape through. It results in a finer spray, and if your paint's thicker, you're going to get a grainy spray and things like that. Uh, so that's typically how to, sp how to thin paint um, from there. I've seen people do what is called a brush test, where you will take like an old paintbrush. Let's see if I have an old crappy one that I don't use. There we go. Uh, and you'll dip it in the paint and if it drips it's good to spray. Now that again I don't 
I don't know how true that is. I've never used the drip test. Uh, it's just something I've seen done. I prefer to... Um, my guideline is, is this, is you can... <clears throat> You can drag the paint up the side of the up the side of the container that it's in, and it'll fall back down and leave a little bit on the side. Uh, so you want about the same consistency as if you were hand brushing, just a little bit thinner. So uh, I'll put that over the side and clean that later. So now I'm going to kind of explain and show you some rough guidelines for spraying paint, and give you some examples, and then maybe spray a little bit. Okay, so before we go into loading brush and or paint into the brush and things like that, uh, one of the most important things that a lot of people kind of out of sight, out of mind is your compressor. Um, this is the gauge that lets you know what pressure you're spraying at. And this is the gauge or the valve or whatever that adjusts it. Um, and then it has like a lock mechanism on it so you can put it down and you can't turn it. Uh, when you pull it up, you can adjust it. Now, um, typically when I'll when I'll explain things, I don't talk about the exact PSI I use. I just kind of use terms low, uh, like a regular or a high pressure. And what I mean by that is, uh, when I'm spraying at a low pressure, I'm generally spraying under 10 PSI. Oops, sorry about that. Um, so, uh, what I'll do is I'll take my airbrush and I'll hold it out, and I'll just, there's nothing in here, I'll just hold the needle down. And if you'll notice, the needle moves when I do that. And that's because when you are spraying, you're getting the actual um, pressure. See that? So right now I'm spraying at a low PSI. It's a little, little over 10. Uh, this is about the lowest I'll ever spray is about 5. And the only time I'll spray at a 5 is when I'm trying to do really, really, really fine lines, things like that. Um, but when I'm lining, I'll typically go up to 10 depending on what I'm doing, how big the piece is, and things like that. Uh, and sometimes I'll even use low PSI, like a 10 or maybe a 15, when I'm uh, blending my shades. Now the most common spray area is going to be between uh, 12 and... 12 and a 20, I'd say. Uh, that's when you're going to be laying down base coats of paint. That's when you're going to be laying down metallics. That's when you're going to be laying down uh, primers, things like that. So this is pretty much going to be your 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 good zone. You're you're not going to move too far out of this. And then sometimes you might want to crank it up to 20, maybe 25. You don't need to go past 25. Sometimes 30. Uh, and the only purpose that those have are for like primers, like this one will say, oh, that's gloss black. So you spray gloss black at about 15 PSI, uh, but I believe you spray primers at a higher PSI, no, 20. Okay, so sometimes I'll spray it at 25, it comes out okay. Um, but it, it, typically you're... you're base coat or your base coats your primers and your top coats will go down at a higher psi um i i assume it's just because they're thicker but generally you will not need to go higher than 25 psi at max uh if if you have to spray higher than 25 psi to get your paint to flow through the airbrush you need to thin your paints more um and alternatively if you're spraying at a lower psi like under 10 and your paints are watery, you need more paint. So we're gonna reset this up. We'll set up next to the booth and we will spray a little bit and I will show you guys what I mean by um, base coating. And then we can wrap this up. All right, so you're gonna have to excuse my disgusting spray booth. I need to clean the filter. It's been a couple weeks. <laughs> uh, but what I've done here is I've taken this kind of spare RX-78 arm. I've primed it up. This is actually, you know, dry. It's sticky dry, but it's dry. Um, <clears throat> and we're not worried about seams or anything like that. It's just a test piece. I'm gonna use this for 
trying out paints and things. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take our white that we did. <clears throat> we're using the uh, Badger Patriot 105. This is a, a wider needle airbrush. I don't know the exact specs on it. I just know that I use it for base coating and for metallics and things like that. Um, and we're going to use the white that we just thinned down and we're going to spray it on that arm. Uh, now, the biggest rule of thumb when spraying paints of any kind is uh, I, I never, ever, ever, ever just fill my cup up unless I have like a whole lot of pieces to use, or to spray. You, you always want less paint than you're going to need because it's easier to fill the brush up than it is to go back and, and you know, waste paint. I'd rather, I'd rather just, you know, fill the, the cup back up. Uh, so here's the piece. We're just going to spray it. Uh, let me make sure my PSI is at about 15. And we're going to just lay down nice even coats, maybe two or three, and that'll be that. Uh, now one thing is I like to spray sort of at like this angle, and then I'll come back and I'll hit it at the other angle to get the other sides of the details. But I'll just twist the piece as I go. So, here we go. And I ran out of paint already, so there, there's my thing in practice. I didn't waste any paint, but I ran out. Uh, but you can see that it's a nice, glossy, white. Part of that is because it's wet. Part of that is because it's actually like a glossy color. Uh, but it looks fine. It covered really well. And that's pretty much the basics on how to, to thin and spray paints. Uh, I didn't go over metallics and things like that. Those are kind of, each one is different. Uh, I use Alclads most of the time anyway. These are all pre-thinned for the airbrush. They work just fine straight out of the bottle. Uh, some Mr. Color paints are ready straight out of the bottle, but there's a few that aren't. Um, and for those, I, I would follow the same practice. And I, like I said, uh, you do about a 50-50. If it's watery and pools, you want to put a little bit more paint. And if it if it's thick and you can't get it out of the brush. Uh, I'd spray it a little thicker. Same thing goes for clear colors. Clear colors can be really tricky. Uh, generally, clear colors I'll make a little thicker uh, than my base paints. I want them thick enough that I can spray them, you know, without pulling my brush too far back because I don't want to saturate the part with clear color. Uh, but we'll do a we'll do a video on clear colors later. Uh, so, all right. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.